All right, I'm gonna show you all the hardware we have in our studio that's compatible with OBS. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And I even popped a popper for this video. Let's do it. I better clean this up real quick. Else I'm gonna get in trouble. No, 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 please. All right, so before we go in all this tech, the number one tool for OBS is a smartphone. Literally, this is my iPhone. Maybe you've got an Android. These smartphones can do three things. They can be a camera for OBS, right? We can have a wireless camera using Video Ninja, using the NDI app. I kind of like the NDI app because it's just an app. It's ready to go. I don't need to open a room or do anything, and it's integrated. It works with my Wi-Fi. It can either be a camera. You can use your smartphone to shoot B-roll. And here's a little tool you might want to use, one of these little smartphone stabilizers. You can get amazing B-roll with your smartphone and a stabilizer, and you can take that B-roll and use it in your OBS production. So it's your, your live camera, it's better than a webcam, better than most webcams, and it can also be used as a controller for OBS. So let's look at some of the controllers that are available for OBS. So your smartphone can be a controller for OBS? Yes. There is a software called Touch Portal. It works great. There's a software that comes with it. You can use their app to turn your smartphone into a controller for OBS. Now here in our studio, we're a little bit more old school. We're using the Elgato Stream Deck. This is like the small one. Wish I would have bought the big one from the beginning because this one, it's just doesn't have enough buttons. It's one, two, three, four, five, so 15. You kind of got to scroll through when you're doing a multi-cam production. So we did get the bigger one at some point, and this one's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times four, 16, 32 buttons. And this is kind of what we, what we went with. So we went with the hardware controllers, but if you're just getting started, check out the free touch portal options to get those cool controller with your smartphone. So while we're over here at the production desk, as you can see, every OBS user has a webcam. Here at our production studio, we've got a lot of PTZ cameras and I wanna show you some of our cameras that we've got. But while we're here, obviously everybody's got a webcam. We did upgrade to the Huddlecam HD Pro. This is an NDI webcam, it's 4K. Check out the Huddlecam HD Pro, it's really cool. There's a USB version and an ethernet version, so we've been using these a lot. Um, we've also been using the PTZ Optics webcams. We obviously have bunches of Logitech cameras as well, but no matter what webcam you're using, think about getting a little light, because no matter what webcam you have, you gotta have light. I'll show some of the lighting in our studio here that we have set up, but this one is called the Loom Cube, and this one can we can, you can just pop right on top of the back of your monitor and then kind of bring it up and above. I guess it kind of goes like that. Boom shaka. And we like to have our producer kind of come on and, and this is the producer's webcam. All right, so now it's time for a fun one. This right here is a siren. And you can see it's our super chat siren. And this was one of the funnest things that we had in our studio. It's connected to a Wi-Fi plug that works with Google's IFTT platform. If this, then that. And essentially, if we get a super chat, then this turns on a Wi-Fi Wi-Fi plug, which turns on a siren. So this is one of the coolest things. In fact, that reminds me of the other cool thing we have for OBS, which is all the way over here. Whoop. Now, over here we have our Lumetrics data clock. This one keeps track of our YouTube subscribers, so pretty cool. This one over here is our, I'm trying to remember this, a Shmurl. And this one keeps track of our Facebook counters. I feel like from a live streaming perspective, to have that live interactivity with things actually happening in your studio is a huge plus for anybody streaming with OBS. Let's pop one more of these just for good measure. All right, so where were we? Cameras, right? So most of the cameras in our studio are set up with NDI technology. We have PTZ cameras, which allow our producer to stay at his desk, right? And control cameras without needing dedicated camera operators since we work with a small crew. But one of the things you'll notice about our cameras is that every single one has a tally light. What's a tally light? 
All right, so here's an example. This is a 30X PTZ Optics camera, and right above it, we got a big red light. That's a tally light, so when we're on camera, we know which camera to look at. And when you've got a multi-camera studio production in OBS, as you grow and you start to use more cameras, and you've got talent, right, people on camera, letting them know which camera to look at is crucial. In fact, in higher end productions, people really expect that. Check out some tally lights. I, we got ours at tallylights.com. Okay, everybody has their favorite camera, right? Well, here's mine. This is a PTC Optics 12X Z cam that's on a slider. So it slowly moves left to right and creates these beautiful B-roll shots that we cut to during our live productions. This control has a controller right here that our producer can use to make it go backwards and forwards and slow and fast. Let's take a look at the video of it. It looks really, really cool. In fact, maybe what I'll do is I'll cut to some of our favorite productions. I'll point it at the, I'll point it at the tech over here and we'll get some really cool live angles. Is it cheating if I move the table? No. Okay, next up is captured cards. Yes, we talked about NDI changing the game in the capture card space, but I don't think anybody who uses OBS has never got away without using a capture card. This one takes HDMI and converts it to USB. This one takes HDMI, loops it out so you don't break the chain and converts it to USB. And then this one actually outputs NDI. This is called an NDI encoder and it actually can output HDMI or take HDMI in and output NDI. Pretty cool. These are all from Magewell. Magewell's been one of the best decoder, encoder, capture card companies out there, but I know Elgato's got some awesome ones out there. There's so many cool ones out there. Capture cards are a must. What kind of capture cards are you guys using? Now, speaking of capture cards, this is actually an encoder. This is the Live View Solo. And I do think as a creator, as somebody who uses OBS, it's, it was mind blowing to me to think, wow, we can go out on the street, we can live stream and send it back to OBS, kind of like a medium you know, video production studio. Now we talked about using Larix Broadcaster. If you've got good cellular connection, you can actually send video over cellular directly back into OBS using SRT. So try that out. If you wanna see more about that, Leave me a comment below. Maybe we'll make a dedicated video about that. The Live View Solo actually takes cellular bonding. So it could take like a Verizon and an AT&T card, encode HDMI off this and send it to the cloud where you can mix in the cloud your OBS RTMP stream with your mobile stream with a mobile encoder. So yes, this Live View Solo has been really fun, really popular. Check it out. Think outside the box. You can leave your studio, but keep streaming. All right, so here's a strange one in the tech tips for hardware for OBS. It's another computer, all right? I don't care whether you're using a MacBook or a little Intel Nook. Over here, we've got one of those new Skull Canyon i7 computers, or we're talking about the big boy computer, which I'm gonna show you in a minute over here. These can all be used together, and you've seen me do it in this production. I got a little computer over here where I'm doing my stand-up presentation and desk area stuff, and then I've got the big bad boy computer with lots of inputs, outputs, bandwidth, everything over here. So if you've got a spare laptop or an extra computer, you can use it as an input in OBS using NDI, generally on your local area network, but maybe Video Ninja, and there's other reasons why you might use multiple computers in the same OBS setup. So start thinking about how you could add that second computer, that second video source using your network. All right, now of course we gotta talk about audio. Here is the Rodecaster Pro. This is a cool product. I've had a lot of fun with it. 
On this side, you can have sound effects. So you got a little board of sound effects for your podcast. You've got four microphone inputs, plus you can pull in Bluetooth so you can have guests come in that way. Huge, simple, easy to use record button, USB connection, plus you've got your XLR connections for high quality microphones. Speaking of microphones, we use pretty much everything It's in this studio. It's about finding the right microphone for the right job. Right here is a headset microphone, and this is something that most people who like to get up and move and walk around and do stuff, this, this one really works. In fact, I'll even take a small piece of tape and tape it right there. So no matter whether I'm looking this way or that way, moving around, I always have impeccable audio. There are other microphones for the job. For example, over here you can see we've got the classic SM58. These are great for, it's getting a little noisy in here. We want to have like, you know, maybe there's a band. I've got, you know, millions of these SM58s from my career in Pro AV. And then this one over here, this is the, the standard podcast mic, right? This is in a quieter room. Everybody's got headphones on the SM7B. Bop, 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 bop. These sound amazing in quiet environments, podcasts especially. So this is our big bad boy PC computer where we could get an NVIDIA graphics card. It's a GTX model. I can't remember which one. We already are planning our next one. This has PCIe expansion slots inside of it. So we were able to put almost all of our cameras are actually coming in SDI, tried and true. Don't need a networking person to help you with plug and play. And these are Magewell four port SDI PCI expansion cards that have been put into it. It's got direct access to the motherboard and it's uncompressed. NDI is compressed, SDI is uncompressed. So the video is really, really good even in low light. And we've got 12 cameras coming in and we've never had a stutter or an issue with the setup. Now we do have two Ethernet NIC cards, network interface cards in the back of this baby. It's got some cooling, it's got 64 gigabytes of RAM. It's a custom computer. You should build one. There are all varieties of capabilities and quality and generally the prices on these things they're supposed to come down every year, but it's been a crazy couple years, so their prices are actually kind of going up and down and all around, but you can't replace one of these. You can do some stuff with a Mac Mini, an Intel Nook, but at a certain point, as a streamer, you get to the point, as an OBS user, you get to something like this. Now I did mention lighting and I wanted to share, we've got these lights all over the place. You kind of need them for every location. Like if this is a location, you need to have like three lights, okay? So for this location, we've got a key light, a fill light, and then a backlight. Now the cool thing is in our studio, it's got multiple locations. And so what we did was we put these lights on swivel mounts. It's called the Mi King L600D. So we can actually change the direction of these LED light panels depending on where we're at. So every space has got at least three or four lights. When you start testing and lighting and trying to figure out what you need, it's usually four lights. They say three is a minimum. I've found about four is necessary. LED panels, as long as they're within, you know, six to eight feet of you, they're usually enough light. You can turn them up. You can change the color temperature to fit your mood, but I wanted to make sure I covered the lights as well. Now I know I'm forgetting some cool technology stuff that you can use with OBS. So let me know what I forgot, what you guys are using in your studios. I just wanted to stimulate some ideas of ways that you can create awesome OBS productions. Obviously we could spend a lot of time talking about creating a set. We had vinyl print put up in our set. It takes a lot of time. I remember we used Pinterest to kind of lay out the colors, the types of things we're trying to do. Then we did wiring diagrams. And as you know, we streamed a lot of that and spoke with our audience and designed things together and all of that's available in our YouTube back catalog. If you want to kind of see, you know, what our thought process was, was to creating a studio. But hopefully today's video gave you some good ideas on technology that you can use with OBS to increase your production value. All right. That's actually the last video for the OBS Super User Guidebook. I hope that you guys get the book and uh, I hope it's helpful. All right, bye guys.